Hello. School science from the eyes of the Woodlands Cree, using the Migawap dwelling and traditional values as a guide to plot fundamental key concepts and understanding. Herman Mitchell, BA, Master of Education, PhD. Um, so this um, article is all about how to use um, Cree understandings to help teach. Um, definitely to have more of a context if you have students of a Cree heritage, um, but also just to have a more open understanding about the multiple ways of knowing things and um, how to understand that uh, every way of thinking has its positives and its negatives and uh, about being respectful of, of the Cree way of thinking. Um, so pretty much um, he uses the Migawap, which is a, it's like a Cree teepee, um, as a metaphor for how to teach in this article science specifically, but it's pretty applicable to all subject areas. Um, there's a fire in the, in the heart of the Migawap, which represents the mother, mother earth, the energy of all things. And then the ground of the Migawap is like spru spruce needle or, oh, I already forget, um, a type of tree. And the symbol is that we're connected to the earth and we're always connected to the earth. Um, and so there are, I think, 13 um, poles that hold up the Migawap, and each of them represent a different um, theme or core value. I'll just rip through the core values really quick here, kind of get more of an idea what I'm talking about. Um, spirituality, respect, humility, love, kinship or relations, thankfulness, helping and sharing, child rearing, hope, guiding oneself, and seal. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I guess. Um, and these, these all come with symbols and analogies and metaphors, and they help us to remember to remember. Um, which, <laughs> I love this idea of remember to remember. Um, you know, the idea that we don't necessarily need to always learn new things often we just need to remember to remember the important things we already know um shad canadian uh rapper shad uh talks about remember to remember quite a bit as a theme in his music and it's it's a really um smart socially positive hip-hop artist and uh that's where i first was introduced to the concept of, of remember to remember, but it, it's really neat seeing it in this article. Um, so there's a lot of specific tips, um, not only for teaching science, but for teaching everything. Really just being open to the fact that there are different ways of knowing <clears throat> and, uh, and that that's a good thing, that diversity is strength. Um, he gives quite a bit of specific tips. Uh, one thing I liked is that it's no coincidence that we have two ears and one mouth. We should be listening twice as much as we speak. I like that idea. Um, he also uh, gave the advice to model happiness as leaders and that that's a, a core, core value and that's a core value for me as well. You have to choose to be happy and if you're a leader, uh, choosing to show that you're happy can go a long way. Um, the idea of humility and that we know very little, we're just a speck of dust in the universe, I'm on board with that as well. Um, unconditional love, um, thankfulness, taking nothing for granted, um, hands-on learning, and then he says, 
One key suggestion is for teachers to bring in an Aboriginal role model and mentors in the science classroom. And uh, this reminded me of a really successful experience we had this year, bringing in David Bouchard, who's a Canadian Métis author, and he has written like 80 books. A lot of them are, are either poem or, or picture books, and they're phenomenal books. Um, and when he came to speak uh, to our students, he wove through themes of mental health, um, dyslexia, uh, love of story, um, like traditional music, as well as the Métis idea of the um, medicine wheel. It's four directions with four colors with animals that symbolize each color and a stage of life that symbolize each color too. And it's kind of a really cool framework for, for living a good life. Um, and when he was there, he, uh, he was giving away like free books um, to people that could remember the, all the different parts of the medicine wheel. And, and uh, one of our students, I will call Jaden, because uh, I don't actually know whether when I'm sharing stories down here, I'm going to use students' names or not. That's something I need to think through. But anyways, Jaden um, had been really into the talk and put up his hand and got called up and knew all the, the directions and all the names and all the everything, nailed it, got his book. And it was a really cool moment for him because he's dyslexic as well. And it was like such an amazing role model. He talked about it all year. Um, and it was a moment that everyone was really proud of him for because he saw uh, somebody with the same learning disability as him being so successful. So I just wrote that reflection for my course. And as I'm writing it, I, it just like clicks that Jaden is also of FNMI heritage. And I just didn't even at all put that together until I wrote it down 20 minutes ago. And I, it causes me so many questions now. Like, is it a good thing that I didn't notice because that wasn't the priority of the experience? Or was that a major part of the experience for him that he would have liked to have shared but didn't feel comfortable to do so? Um, you know, if him or his parents could decide, would that be a part of the story that they'd like me to share? Or was he connecting as an individual with a love of reading? Um, I don't know, it adds a whole other thing. Um, and I really don't think anyone put it together in that way. And I don't know whether we should have or not. <laughs> with this um, TQS5, this focus specifically on foundational knowledge of FNMI, um, I'm wondering how, as a European male, <laughs> um, what to do? Because I felt like that's an amazing experience for this child. And now I'm like, oh, should it have been different? And I don't even know if I should wonder that. And now I don't even know if I should post this because I don't, I don't know. So if nothing else, the article made me think. It also taught me a significant amount about um, the Migawap and uh, some of the traditional core values of the Cree. Um, yeah, Northern Cree, I guess. So, up to nine minutes. I'm just going deep with these videos, but that's okay. Good night.